ACP academic and career planning. Uh, in our school, we utilize a portfolio pro advisement and portfolio process. So starting with sixth grade all the way through 12, uh, students are paired up with one faculty member that through the middle school, they're gonna follow that one person. And then from their freshman year through their senior year, hopefully they're gonna have that one same uh, faculty member who's gonna meet with them two times every week to work on academic and career planning. So that may be working on resumes, applying to schools, a lot of uh, trips to different manufacturing facilities, campus visits, um, job shadows, youth apprenticeships. So, so basically our goal is when they leave, they have an idea of what they wanna do uh, versus uh, us telling them what they should do. Our mission is to give students a distinct advantage. We're always trying to find a way to give an advantage, and the way we do that is strong classrooms, strong culture, and strong community connections. And, and truly, when you look at the strong community connections, how our students can learn outside of school is actually more powerful in some cases than what we can teach them in school. And when we can shift our brain to see that learning outside the bricks and mortar of school is as important, if not more important, than the things we can do in school, that's when that flywheel starts spinning. And we actually have an education system that's responding to the needs of our community. That change is where we really need to educate everyone, right? the students, the teachers, the parents, when we explain to them the labor market need and where the jobs are when they graduate, how much they can make, and what the potential is for career growth as well, that's, that's phenomenal. We do launch hour event programs in Appleton too where we give kids the opportunity to go out and see many of our manufacturing industries. And we actually have an event on November 7th at the Bordini Center where our businesses in the area will come in and parents and students will be invited from five to seven to see the different companies and the opportunities they will have for students while they're still in school. Not when they're out, but how can I get started while I'm still in school to answer that question, what do you wanna try? We're very fortunate in Winnicott. We have, in, in sixth grade, I, receive, I, I get the kids and we actually teach them solid modeling. So we're teaching them um, geometry, we're teaching them spatial analysis, we're teaching them really the development using a computer. So they, and then in turn, we 3D print uh, those parts. So they're understanding tolerances and they're doing that. So they do that at the sixth grade level. And then at the seventh grade level, they learn to manufacture a product. They do some woodworking, they get their hands on some things, start to kind of absorb, I guess you could say, the project. And then in eighth grade, we, we teach them automation. So now we're teaching them to really take uh, design and automate it. And how do we do that? We do that through electronics. We do that through program. We do that through building. So we use a lot of our VEX robotics to really establish that. So as a, as a result of that, the students coming in to the high school have a pretty good, solid knowledge of, of I don't want to say of the real world manufacturing, but they got concepts and they begin to understand what it's like. And that way we can, as teachers, develop them a little bit younger so they're ready for a youth apprenticeship or something, a job shadow or something like that. We get a lot of younger students at these events. It's mainly elementary school students, a few middle school students, but for most of them, this is the first time that they've ever gotten a hands-on experience using these types of equipment and uh, lots of times they've heard of it from a, a mom or a dad or something like that who maybe works in the industry and and um, so it's cool the kids are excited I mean I've had as, as young as a four-year-old working a, a power miter box a saw to uh, cut a piece of wood I'm very hands-on with the, the student when this is happening but I their you know their eyes are big their parents eyes are big because they never you know imagine their kid their, kid, their son or daughter would be doing that um, you know, the welding, it, you're making fire, you're working with sparks, and, then, and the kids just get excited about that. So, and it's not just for the students, we want to get the parents involved as well. Erin Dreheim, she's a worker at Skyline Technologies. Um, Mike Schmidt, he works for Plexus. And um, Steve Germenis, he works for Thurman Financial. They were our uh, three Teals volunteers we had come in last year. And Erin, I knew from Girls Who Code, she was the mentor that would come in and say, hey, here's how we're going to work through these problems. And just having them there is really important because then you get the one-on-one -on -one conversation like, 
what is this? Like, how do you do this in a regular job? Like, how does it relate to what you're going to be doing later on? Just those conversations of what the future could hold versus what you might perceive it may hold, which may or may not be true. Students were really excited when, you know, as new equipment starts to come in, um, it's, it's an exciting new thing. We've got a fabrication lab where students are able to come in and 3D model parts on the computer. We've got 3D printers, we've got laser engravers, we've got desktop CNC machines, and just allowing the students to use those as an outlet for creativity. We've seen an entirely new audience come to technology education. We've got students coming from art class who love the design aspect coming in to work on the computers. We've got students who would have never considered a career in manufacturing until they've gotten in and they've done the work and they've ran the machines and they really realize that they have a passion uh, for these things. So it's, it's been exciting. It's attracted a new clientele into, you know, what was traditionally your, your boys who wanted to weld and fabricate. And we still have those boys, but we also have an entirely new population of students in the, in the tech ed. Now you go into these high schools and counselors are starting to talk about, well, how about this? You know, and it's not only the technical college, the two-year schools, it's also, let's look at this trade, um, pipe fitting, uh, millwrights, you know, all electrical, uh, electricians, plumbers. These are very honorable things. And, you know, somebody in the past could have said, well, no, you're not going to get paid much and all these things, but when you break it down for the amount of money you spend for college education versus some of the, you know, we're, we're much less expensive, plus you can work while you're going to school, you go into the trades, they pay for all of it. There's a lot of benefits to it, and when you kind of break it down, the only thing, the only thing that's holding some people back is just the stigma, and that stigma's starting to go away. One of the historical challenges that's happening, um, it used to happen, is that students didn't get a career options till after graduation. And K-12 schools in our communities are really taking a proactive approach to um, fostering that learning early. So we partnered with four of our local school districts, Kakana, Kimberly, Little Shoot, um, and Freedom, as well as CESA 6 and Fox Valley Technical College to host a Future Ready career event for middle school students. It was a great opportunity for parents and students to come and learn about what the future job market would look like in 2030, career pathways, as well as career cruising for parents to find out what these kids are doing inside the classroom already to explore career options.